Father God, we are so thankful to be in your presence. We are grateful to be followers of your Son. And we're grateful to celebrate this time. Father, where you became a human child. Help that to bring us to a place of wonder today as we worship you with reverence and sincerity. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light is dawned. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. Establishing <coughs> and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Good morning, church. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, I've come to a worship service that I hope you will enjoy. Um, we're so grateful to be here, the Detroit Church and the Ann Arbor Church together. And uh, we have people out of town, we have people in town. And I just want to give a special welcome to all the family from out of town and all the friends here, perhaps even for the first time. We're so grateful you're here. And uh, even for me, it's special. Uh, my dad's up here playing the electric guitar. Uh, my mom and dad served in the ministry for 40 plus years, and they retired like a week ago. So if he just starts shredding, it's because he's excited. Uh, my brother in law's here with uh, my amazing sister and their kids. They're in the church over there. And uh, a lot of people down. Uh, Aaron Hawkins and his wife and family are in town. Aaron. And his wife served in the full-time ministry in Phoenix, and he'll be speaking today. I hear tell that he will also, I don't know what velocity, but be distributing candy to some of you. What? Also, uh, it's important to note that we don't, we have we have tiny humans in the church with us today. There's no kids class today, which means there's no fellowship break. It's going to be a shorter service. We're going to accommodate that. For those of you that don't have kids, you've never had to wrangle them through a church service. It's almost impossible. And so when you do a family service like this, you have to embrace that there's going to be strangely timed shouts. There's going to be weeping that's not from joy and worship. Things are going to happen. You can't control it. Don't try to. Just embrace the family. Let's have a great time of worship today. We're going to have scripture reading, psalm, a short lesson, and some time to celebrate. Amen? Let's have scripture read. There is a God. He is alive, and in him we live and move and have our being. From the dust he shaped mankind. He is our God. He is the great I Am. Long ago, prophets heard his voice, but now he speaks through his Son, who was sent as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. Through him, God set us free from sin, so that we could live with him forevermore. We hear a voice from the throne saying, Look! God's dwelling place is now among people, and he will dwell with us. We will be his people, and God himself will be with us and be our God. He will wipe away every fear from our eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loves us and sent his son to be born in a manger. And to die on the cross. Let's stand together as we sing about the risen king. There is beyond the azure blue.
Mokma Aaron. Peace 
today. I'm grateful they read from Isaiah 9, the Prince of Peace. I didn't have that scripture up, but uh, we're going to talk about the Prince of Peace. Now, uh, before I jump in, let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you give us. Thank you for the family that you give us. Thank you that we can, uh, you know, it's been amazing, Father, just to be able to go from Phoenix to Detroit and then coming into the church today, it feels like coming home. And so thank you so much for that, just how your kingdom works all over the world. We love you and your sons in my pray. Amen. Okay, I do want to tell, tell the kids, kids, I've got a video that we're going to show in a minute. I've got some candy up here, and I'm going to need y'all's help with some of the candy in a minute. So it, when I call the kids up, I'm going to need you to come up here, okay? But before you come up, kids, I need you to be good, okay? I need you to be able to sit still for a couple minutes, because i got to talk to the adults. The adults need some help. All of us adults need some help. All right, kids? We got it, kids? I see my son Judah. He's dancing. He knows, okay? But I got great news for everybody. The Prince of Peace has arrived. Do you know this? Do you know that the Prince of Peace has arrived? That's what we celebrate this time of year. The Bible has been predicting this for years. In Micah chapter 5, verse 4, it says, He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. We read in Isaiah 9 that he is the Prince of Peace. And we know the, the Christmas story, right? And we, many of us have read the Christmas story. We're going to read the Christmas story tonight or tomorrow with our families. But we know the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2. And I'm not going to go through all of it. We're just going to read this section right here. You know, the angel said to them, do not be afraid. Now, I love that angels start a lot of their meetings with people with that. Don't be afraid. I mean, I haven't had a, res a visit from an angel yet. I don't know if any of you have. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm guessing that's what I will need to hear. <laughs> do not be afraid, Aaron. Okay, thank you. Because I am really scared right now. Looking at this angel. Um, do not be afraid. He says, I bring you good news. And he's talking to the shepherds. Bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. The Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly... A great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. Jesus has arrived. And this is the good news for all of us. The euangelion. That's what they're talking about. They're coming to bring in the good news for all people that, that there is a savior that has came and made himself human. And he started out in the lowest and most humblest of circumstances. This is the good news. And great joy can be had for all of us. In Romans 5 verse 1 it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now there's something about the Christmas story that stood out to me in a new way this year. And I wanted to share it with you guys really quick. Come on, Aaron. Come on, Aaron. All right, Aaron. Come on, bro. All the praise that's given to Jesus in these early chapters, especially in Luke and Matthew, you know, the, the writings about him hundreds of years before, sometimes 700 years before, there's something that stood out to me. All that praise that's given to him, the angels, the shepherds, Simeon and Anna, you know, John the Baptist jumping out and, and, and his mom, Elizabeth's womb. And, you know, there's just so many instances where people are praising this baby that has yet to be born or is already born. But it's just a baby. Now, we understand Mary, right? Every mom here knows about praising your unborn baby. 
because you then you know Mary sang a song about her child, and I know with all the moms here, my wife did the same thing, thinking about what are they going to be like? You know, wow, he's jumping all over the place. He's going to be the best athlete ever. <laughs> you know, you already got great plans for your kids before they even come out. Yeah. But there's, but not everybody else thinks that way about your kids. But Jesus is different. Mm. All this praise is coming to him. The angels are praising him. Jesus is praised before he was a born. He was praised as a newborn. There are angels singing in the sky for him before he became a rabbi, before he taught a lesson, before he did a miracle, before he appointed any apostles. Jesus at this point hadn't lived a perfect life. He hadn't died on the cross for our sins. He hadn't ra been raised from the death, from the grave, sorry. The praise that he received is not about what he had done but about who he is. The praise he had received was not about what he had done, but about who he is. And if our praise is only based on what we can see God doing, then what happens when you don't see God working? Because I don't know about you guys, there's sometimes where it's just hard to see God working, Right? So what do you do if your praise is only based on those instances? When I can see God working, praise God. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a wishy-washy faith. Right. Yeah. Right. And we cannot have that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just take notice of the, the early chapters, the, the story of Jesus. Man, they, they were praising him before he was born. Not because of what he did, but because of who he is. Jesus is worthy of our praise. If you look through the scriptures, it tells you about this Jesus whom we worship. It tells you things like he is the son, he is the king, he is the Lord, he is the prophesied Messiah, the savior, the redeemer, the way, the truth, the life, he's the bright and morning star, he is the rock, he is the true vine, he is our mediator, he is the great high priest, he is the lamb of God, he is the lion of Judah, he is the bread of life, he is the chief cornerstone, he's the good shepherd. He's the Alpha, He's the Omega, He's the beginning and the end. He deserves all our praise this morning. Amen? We should all be praising Him. No other person in history comes close to His impact. We tell time differently because of Him. Not because of somebody else. Not because of a president, a, a, a great philosopher or anything like that. We don't tell time because, I mean, those, those people are forgotten. Yeah. We tell time differently because of this Jesus. Yeah. His impact, his strength, his power, his compassion, his compassion, his wisdom, his grace. This is who he is and whether you know him or not, he is worthy of all our praise. Yeah. So he is here, amen? Amen. amen. I got more good news for you. All right. Ooh, He's coming back. <laughs> the Prince of Peace will come back. And doesn't that fire you up knowing who he is? Yeah. It might scare some of you too. I don't know you guys, it scares me sometimes. I'm like, oh, well, I'm not living right. What if he came back today? Okay, I need to turn it around right now. You know, hopefully the, just that thought that he is coming back. Can, can motivate you a little bit heading into the holidays if there's any bad decisions you were thinking about making. He's coming back. And you don't know it. Just say it. Okay? Doesn't that get you fired up? He is coming back. Now, I want to talk about that here, here a little bit. Like I said, the theme that I want to talk about is peace. And I want to give you a little bit of a picture of peace. We're going to watch a video from this group called The Bible Project. And they talk about peace. And they're going to kind of dive into that word, peace, a little bit. Because peace, the way we understand it, is not necessarily how the Bible um, translates it for us. So we'll, we want to broaden our understanding of that word, peace. But in Revelation chapter 21, we're all the way to the back of the Bible here. You get this picture of peace here. And as John recounts a vision that was given to him, he says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from, from God, prepared as a bride, beautiful 
dressed for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And look at this picture of peace, verse 4. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. Or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed. He who was seated on the seated on the throne said, "I am making everything new." And then he said, "Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true." Amen. We're going to watch a quick video on this whole idea of the word peace. I will continue. The word peace is common in most languages. People can talk about peace treaties or times of peace. It means the absence of war. And in the Bible, the word peace can refer to the absence of conflict, but it also points to the presence of something better in its place. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. And in the New Testament, the Greek word is eirene. The most basic meaning of shalom is complete or whole. The word can refer to a stone that has a perfect, whole shape with no cracks. It can also refer to a completed stone wall that has no gaps and no missing bricks. Shalom refers to something that's complex, with lots of pieces, that's in a state of completeness, wholeness. It's like Job, who says his tents are in a state of shalom because he counted his flock and no animals were missing. This is why shalom can refer to a person's well-being. Like when David visited his brothers on the battlefield, he asked about their shalom. The core idea is that life is complex full of moving parts and relationships and situations, and when any of these is out of alignment or missing, your shalom breaks down. Life is no longer whole, it needs to be restored. In fact, that's the basic meaning of shalom when you use it as a verb. To bring shalom literally means to make complete or restore. So Solomon brings shalom to the unfinished temple when he completes it. Or if your animal accidentally damages your neighbor's field, you shalom them by giving them a complete repayment for their loss. You take what's missing and you restore it to wholeness. The same goes for human relationships. In the book of Proverbs, to reconcile and heal a broken relationship is to bring shalom. And when rival kingdoms make shalom in the Bible, it doesn't just mean they stop fighting, it also means they start working together for each other's benefit. This state of shalom is what Israel's kings were supposed to cultivate, and it rarely happened. So the prophet Isaiah, he looked forward to a future king, a prince of shalom. And his reign would bring shalom with no end. A time when God would make a covenant of shalom with his people, and make right all wrongs, and heal all that's been broken. This is why Jesus' birth in the New Testament was announced as the arrival of Erene. Remember, that's the Greek word for peace. Jesus came to offer his peace to others, like when he said to his followers, My peace I give to you all. The apostles claimed that Jesus made peace between messed up humans and God when he died and rose from the dead. The idea is that he restored to wholeness the broken relationship between humans and their creator. This is why the Apostle Paul can say, Jesus himself is our Irene. He was the whole complete human that I am made to be, but have failed to be. And now he gives me his life as a gift. And this means that Jesus' followers are now called to create peace. Paul instructed local churches to keep their unity through the bond of peace, which requires humility and patience and bearing with others in love. Becoming people of peace means participating in the life of Jesus, who reconciled all things in heaven and earth, restoring peace through his death and resurrection. So peace takes a lot of work, because it's not just the absence of conflict. True peace requires taking what's broken and restoring it to wholeness, whether it's in our lives, our relationships, or in our world. And that's the rich biblical concept of peace. Isn't that awesome? I love like that picture of peace. And the first time I learned about this uh, was, was the end of actually a year ago. Because my wife, she, she chose this word shalom as her word of the year. I don't know if anybody else does that. I, I don't do that. I might do that this year. I'm still thinking about my word. But um, my wife picked the word shalom. And, and so she dove into it and I started learning. Wow, this means more than just stop fighting but really restoring and bringing things back together. And really when I thought about it, the Bible actually is just 
is bookended by like this picture of shalom. Because you remember in Genesis, right? We started off in the Garden of Eden. And then you get to Revelation chapter 22. The angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God. And the lamb down the, sorry, not right. Okay, yeah, lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life. Okay, there's the Garden of Eden, right? The, the tree of life was where? The Garden of Eden. Bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of trees, uh, leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in this city and His servants will serve Him. They will see His face and His name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever. You know, this whole story of the Bible from Genesis all the way, all the way to Revelation. We sinned in Genesis. Humankind sinned. And, and we broke peace with God. And through Jesus, he restores that relationship with us. Through him arriving. But then when he comes back, it's going to be restored all the way to its fullest. And we're going to be back in the Garden of Eden. That's what the Bible teaches. It's this whole giant picture of Shalom. We serve a God who wants to bring us together. Who wants to put us back together. You know, peace from Jesus, it doesn't necessarily look like we want it to look sometimes. <laughs> you know, Jesus in John 14, he says, all this I have spoken while with you. When he's talking to his disciples at the very end of his life, right before he goes to the cross. This is what he says. I've spoken all these things while still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. He says, peace. I leave with you at any. I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. I don't give this peace the same way the world gives peace. You see, I've seen people think they are functioning with peace together because they're just not fighting. I grew up in the South. Okay? I've seen it happen. Where people think they're at peace with one another because they're not arguing with each other. But in their hearts, we know it. Nope. There is no peace Come in on. their heart. There is not true restoration that has happened. Jesus Amen. says, no, like, I bring a different type of peace. And not everybody's comfortable with the type of peace that Jesus brings. Amen. It's deeper than just stop arguing with one another. Mm. Stop fighting with one another. That doesn't work in your marriage. I'm going to tell you that now. How's your marriage going? Oh, we haven't fought in five years. Oh, are you talking? <laughs> really? You know, it's the peace that God brings is totally different than the way we think of peace sometimes. Right. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, and that says, which transcends all understanding, Amen. will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God doesn't just want us to sit back and indulge in his peace. Like the video said, he wants us to take part in the, the shalom here on earth. He wants us to be peacemakers. In, in Matthew 5, he says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. So I want to talk about this element really quick. And this is where the kids, y'all have done amazing, by the way. Kids? Yeah. Amazing. Okay. This is where I need a few uh, uh, kids. Can I have some kids come up? You don't all have to come up if you don't want, but I, I could use a couple of kids up here. We're having a little fun. I see my boys. There we go. Okay. Got some kids up here? Let's come up to just this front area right here. Okay. Okay. You guys like Kit Kat bars? Okay. Oh, now more kids are coming up. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, so adults, I need y'all to help the kids out. Tell, sing them this song, please. Give me a break. Give me a break. Bring me out the piece of that Kit Kat bar. Again! Okay. Don't, don't open them yet, but in a second, I'm going to let you open them right here at church. Okay, here, here. Y'all help out. Okay, and I'm going to have uh, Levi and Judah. Can I have you guys help me out? You want to help me out up here? Okay. 
Okay, here. here go, go around the side. Okay, kids, y'all stay right there, okay? Because I got something else for you in just a second. But I need your attention, okay? I'm going to do this with my kids because I don't know y'all's kids like this. <laughs> you want to pick that bar, Jesus? You don't want one? Okay, that's okay. Okay, so Levi, can you open your Kit Kat bar? You guys can open up your Kit Kat bars, okay? Are there any adults that really want a Kit Kat bar? Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not, not. Okay, you want one? Can I? We 
all the stuff that became good friends with the kids here in the front. As we see, guys, y'all get the picture, right? We're not just trying to get put back together a little bit. We want to become something completely new. The old is gone, the new is here. We want to become a new creation. We're going to let the kids get their gummy bears and head back to their seats. Kids, thank you so much. You know, in Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible says, But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. For he himself is our peace. He has made the two groups one. He has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in the flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose... His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. Again, so it's not just for you to become something new. It's for all of us to become something new. He says, in one body reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far away and peace. To those who were near. When Jesus is our peace. He takes things that are broken. Which is all of us. If we're honest. It's this entire world really. And he restores them. And he brings them into something new. And. You know I got one little thing. If you, if you leave with anything. I want you to just remember this. And reflect on this over the next week. Is that because we are in pieces. We need his peace. And that's the main point. That's what him coming, the Prince of Peace coming, does for us. Because we are all in pieces, right? If we're honest with ourselves, we are all in pieces. There is something broken. And we need him to put us back together. And not just become that old Kit Kat bar that's half eaten. And, and you, know, it's, you know, that's not what we're trying to become. We're trying to become something completely new. In a relationship with him. So today as we reflect. And, and tomorrow really as you celebrate Christmas with your families. Maybe you start tonight. We're starting tonight with an ugly sweater. Oh. Christmas party. I'm excited about that. I want you to be reminded of your role in this. To actively make peace. As we await the fullness of God's peace. Through the second coming that will be Jesus Christ. So how can we do that? How can we usher in. God's peace this season, I got some ideas. Maybe set aside some time for personal devotion to God. Take, take a little extra time and walk closely with God over the next week. Help somebody who's busy or overburdened over the next week. Provide a, a meal to someone or a family who is facing food anxiety. This is the perfect time of year to pursue peace. Don't wait till January 1st to start. Okay? This is the perfect time of year. And honestly, the world will be greater because of it. Your world around you will be greater because you choose to pursue peace, like biblical peace in your life. Okay? So we're going to close out in a prayer for the communion. You guys hopefully have the, the, the emblems. And thank you guys for allowing our family to come here and give your kids candy <laughs> and to share. And we hope that you have an amazing holiday and Christmas. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for all that you give us. You, Father, are our peace. You have brought each one of us back to you. You call each one of us by our names. And you restore a relationship to your Father in heaven. You, you have made that possible through your death and your sacrifice on the cross. And Father, as we remember, as we take the cup, as we 
as we eat the bread, Lord, help us to remember that sacrifice, that, that, that you, you held this picture of peace. You were the Prince of Peace all the way until the end, and you continue to be that way. Father, we look forward to you coming back. We love you. It's near something I pray. Amen. Oh.